Okay, so today we're going to talk about um, fun and creative ways to publish students' writing. I think it's just really important to publish their writing um, so that they are writing for a purpose. So we're going to get started here. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Heidi Brislin. I'm an occupational therapist by training. I am an ass assistive technology specialist in the Edmonds School District and um, for the Special Ed Tech Center. So I've got more years of experience than I care to say um, and have been doing assistive technology for about the last six years. All right, today we're gonna to talk about high, low tech and high tech um, ways to publish students' writing so that it's super fun. And that um, you'll be able to kind of come up with some ideas for how to design a structured writing activity um, for emergent writers. So we'll talk about that a little bit. And then I wanna to get to know you guys a little bit and are there still only three of us on? Or no. I Okay, so we can either do this poll, let's do the poll so I can see if it works. Um, and then um, you can just either go to the tiny URL or use your camera to capture the um, QR code. Okay, we've got another one here, sorry. Um, so this is from Poll Everywhere and it is kind of a fun little thing to do. Um, and you can either have a little code that the students type in the cut and paste into the browser. Um, but um, I want us to talk about why we write. You know, why do you write? Why is it important to write? Um, all right, so, so one of my, the people I admire most in the world and I look up to and I wanna be her someday is Karen Erickson. And I don't know if any of you were doing the book study on her um, amazing book, um, I'll show it to you here. Um, Comprehensive Literacy for All. If this is not part of your bookshelf, <clears throat> I would highly recommend it. It is. It was published this year. So it is the latest and greatest research and evidence on how to teach students with complex bodies and just really significantly struggling learners how to read and write. Um, the research is done out of the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. Um, and it's just, you know, as an OT, it was like, oh, you know, there were so many like wonderful aha moments. Um, as a teacher, I have several friends who are teachers and they were like, have totally changed how they're teaching literacy skills um, based on this. And Setsi is doing a book study. I think they're on chapter four, um, but you can go and watch the recorded webinars from last spring. So just lots of great stuff. But um, Karen and um, David um, Coppenhaver um, have this quote that, you know, it's a process of constructing texts that communicate experiences, thoughts, feelings, and understandings for diverse audiences and purposes. So it's, I mean, we had come up with a lot of the ideas. I mean, we write for a wide, wide range of um, things. I mean, it's a really important life skill. And so making sure um, that all of our students have that life skill when they leave us is just so important. Um, doesn't have to look the same for everybody, um, but they all need to have the ability to get what they know or want to say um, out and have it be able to be published. So whenever I write, it's for a purpose. I'm writing an IEP. I'm writing a report. I'm writing step-by-step -step directions. I'm creating a website. Um, I've got to go write a birthday card to my son here in a little bit. Um, you know, I journal sometimes for stress management, man, I, for stress management. I um, take notes. So there's, you know, I don't usually write without a purpose. Um, my grocery list is to help me, again, remember what I came to the store for, um, and often so I don't get sidetracked getting a bunch of things that I don't need at the store. Um, and during the pandemic, that has become especially important because I want to get in and get out. So my list is really important now. Um, so when we're looking at our students, you want to give them like, in, you know, they want to have, you want to look at their interests that motivate their writing. What are they interested in? 
And um, I know my, my, ch my children are adults now and like their least favorite thing, Sunday night, we'd start to have little meltdowns about tomorrow, I am gonna have to write about my weekend and we did not do anything fun. What am I gonna write? So again, not a motivating topic for them. And so figuring out what their in in interests are and coming up with a motivating topic is really important giving them some choices of things to write about. So do you want to write about your dog? Do you want to write about your friend, Joey? Um, do you want to write about, um, I had one um, student who loved bulldogs, you know, did you want to write about bulldogs? And so let them kind of, I did, I guess I did dogs twice anyway. Um, so give them a choice of topics and, and that's really great with some of your complex learners because you can work on some choice making, you know, and um, use pictures of things that they like to write about and so have a family help you you can either put together a book um, that just has some things that they're interested in or pictures of family members or toys or pets or, you know, if they're really into Star Wars some Star Wars scenes and um, you know, and let them go through and pick what topic they want to write about, because you're going to get way more writing if it's something that they're, you know, bought into writing. And then you want to publish and share their writing and share it broadly. And so coming up with fun ways to share um, their writing is so important. And so today we are going to talk about some low tech ideas and um, go from there. So this is a group of, they probably were first graders here and it was around St. Patrick's Day. And so what we did for our activity, obviously, is we made these leprechaun hats. And then they had a writing activity. So we probably, so typically we would do a little bit of reading, get familiar on the history, you know, what is a leprechaun, find a leprechaun story somewhere. And we'll talk about some places you can find that in a little bit. Um, and then we would do a little bit of, um, we called it leprechaun writing. And you can tell from the picture, everybody is really excited to do some leprechaun writing. Um, so it took like, you know, sitting down in my resource writing group that I um, co-taught, um, it took sitting down and writing about something I don't wanna write about to, oh, now this is really pretty fun and exciting. Um, so that's um, one way you can do um, gifts, um, different crafts, um, Look at what's happening in the community that people are excited about and write about. Um, thank you letters. I know um, when I worked in my prior district, we had um, a wonderful schools foundation who would provide a lot of technology to support writing. And so we got on those iPads they purchased using Clicker and wrote thank you letters to everybody. Um, and, you know, they're super excited about it, you know, making bookmarks. And so we've got a few. Um, Idea. So this is one of my favorite um, fall writing activities that when I um, am, when I was working as an OT that I used with my group. And so I had created um, manila folder tracers of the acorn and then what the top would look like. So they would have to hold down the acorn bottom, trace around it, then cut it, and then hold down the top. Um, on the back of the sandpaper and trace around and cut it. So for kids who can cut, that's great. Um, for kids who can't cut or cutting is just developing, we would go ahead and um, pre-trace it and then have it cut to where maybe they just had to do the top section or the, of the acorn of the nut and then the bottom section of the stem um, so that it was straight. Or maybe they had like a one inch little part that they could snip. So everybody got to do some piece of cutting. Um, we also um, had one gal that she needed to use um, switch adapted scissors. And so she was able to cut hers with switch adapted scissors and they will cut the um, sandpaper. Um, and then we glue it. So I'm all into like these multiple step projects as you can probably tell from the um, leprechaun hats um, because they just work on that planning and that organizing and there's some choice making. So you know, I used um, scrapbook paper and so they would pick what color paper they wanted. So even your most, you know, impacted kids, if you're working on making two choices, you can say, okay, here's two choices of paper. Do you want, you know, the orange one with leaves or do you want the 
brown one that looks like hay, you know, and so they could make some choices. And then to um, do this project, there are a couple things we did. Um, first grade was reading Arbor Day. And um, so I went into Tar Hill Reader and found a book about trees and tried to find a book about acorns. And then I went into Epic and there is a book about oak trees and acorns. And so we read the book together. So we did some shared reading. We talked about it. We did a lot of talking about, um, you know, the bottom of the acorn is smooth. The top is rough, you know, working on all of those like conceptual things that they would need to do. And then we did a structured writing, um, which is what you can see um, over here on the, it's on my right, I'm not sure if it's on your left, but kind of right here. And, um, and this is for um, one of my older groups that has a few more literacy skills. So you could also do a structured writing that was acorns are. So for like my AAC users in this group, it was like acorns are, and then underneath I'd have a little thing like pick a color word, you know? And so it was just a acorns are, pick a size word. And then they, and it really helped kind of them start to become familiar with their AAC device because they'd have to figure it out. And we were doing some of this, not the acorn activity, but something pretty similar when we went to remote learning last spring. And, um, it really helped the families get familiar with where the words were. And then I always would do a word kind of, it would be acorns are spell your own word. And they could either use the alphabet um, in their AAC device or um, use an alternative pencil, which is an alphabet strip and whatever letters they pick or what you put down there. Um, so, and then you could, you know, this writing would get transferred into like a little book here and then they would take it home um, for the family. And I have done this with everybody from my most complex students to my fifth graders. Um, you know, you just have to, you know, shake it up just a little bit. Um, and then of course, when they're done with their book, they get to get up and sit in the author's chair. Um, and on Zoom, it could be, you know, they could do the author and, you know, it could be their window that's up, the speaker, um, and they could share their book. Um, so um, another thing is to make cards for special occasions. So these, this was a Mother's Day card that we did as well. And so again, lots of um, cutting, folding, tracing um, activities that could be modified for students depending on um, their level. And then if you, you could either have them write a poem for mom or, um, you know, you know, write a story for mom, or you could do one of those structured writings, my mom is. Um, and then just have them pick words, you know, for your um, emergent writers. So a nice activity that can be um, modified for everybody. And they're so excited. Um, another place to look is um, these periodically come up on Amazon. It's a klutz book and um, they're no longer purchased, but there's all sorts of ideas for making mini books in here. Um, So that's just a, a good resource. You can do like keychain books or do all sorts of crazy things. But another thing that um, Carolyn Musselwhite mentioned at one of the um, conferences I was at is she'll take like a, you know, like the adding paper rolls and um, unroll it like a scroll and do some scroll writing. And so there's just a variety of um, ways to make it fun and interesting. And of course, with, you know, remote, um, learning, there's the challenge of figuring out what they have at home. And if your school's sending home packets, have the packet for that, but just um, some different ways to, I know um, last spring, my um, teacher was doing a news to you group. And so we'd have, I'll show you what we did for that or what, what we were doing. Um, this is another one that um, when the Seahawks were in the Super Bowl, we took all of the resource room kids, whether they were OT or not. And we all made, um, Seahawk helmets and they got to choose like the color of the face and where the band-aid went and um, all the different colors and then when we were all done we took a picture and wrote um, a good luck message to the Seahawks. So again super way to get kids engaged so it was super fun. So any questions there you can unmute and ask. 
So some high tech ideas to publish writing that lend themselves to remote learning um, are PowerPoint books, um, Google slide books, um, book creator books, and um, Tar Heel reader books. So those are just some really um, fun things to do. And we'll go through each of those. So the, again, back to the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, they have put together some templates and the links are here and you will get a copy of the PowerPoint. So we are gonna go and look at these templates which make it really nice because then it's like super easy. And who, who doesn't like super easy? I learned I can, let's see. So when you get to their website, um, there's, it talks about PowerPoint templates. And this is a fun website to just kind of um, look at their different projects and activities. Um, talks about why all students need books. It gives you the link for Tar Heel Reader, which we'll get into in just a minute. Um, and then how to make your own PowerPoint books using templates. And um, talks about things that the templates are set up. So they'll, they'll reread the book. Um, you can set it to do a continuous loop. Um, you know, visual feedback during page turning, um, auditory feedback. So you can add sounds and you can add all of the animations and different features in there and they can be involved in picking those and um, you can set it to automatically open in um, slideshow book mode. And so anyway, so they have got several samples here. So there's like a, we'll open the ABC book in a minute. Um, or one of the ABC books, but there's, you know, they've got some ones that you can use right away. Um, ABC books, a high contrast ABC book, um, a simple ABC book, another high contrast just book template in general, and a simple book template. So that is, you know, a good way to start. And so here's what the ABC book template looks like. So you can see this was an upper um, age group of kids they were reading journey to the center of the earth and basically you know how to make it relevant and engaging and adapt it to their level um, they had their journey abc book and so they had to come up with you know and you could do this for any book you could pick any book so you know i definitely recommend like before you do some writing depending on what it is you know make sure they have some background information because not all of our students have the same response um, experiences. And when we write, we use our shared experiences to draw on knowledge. And so a lot of times I'm finding something, we're getting some background knowledge, and then we're going into um, what we're going to write in the book. And, and you can work on so many skills. So your emergent writers, you can um, use the alternative pencil. I'll be doing a webinar on that um, in November. Um, so if you want to come and um, learn about how to use that with your most complex students, that will be the topic of that one. Um, and then um, Michelle Bishop and I are doing a conference the, for the November 4th and 5th, and I can't remember which day is which, but um, one of the days is um, personal narratives. And it's, again, looking at all kids, but especially looking at some of those complex kiddos. Um, and then the template is just set right here. So you've got A, and you know they can type their text, put the picture in that they wanna find. Um, so it's just a really nice, um, template that's already done for you. You don't have to do anything there at all. Um, and then I have a PowerPoint somewhere. Let's see. So this again is in PowerPoint and I just popped some things in here so you could um, see. And so um, the nice thing about PowerPoint is you can do, you can pick a design, um, you can um, add transitions, you can have the pictures come and go. 
Um, you can add animations. Um, slide, you can set it up as a slideshow. And then I think in the design, where was that? You can draw in it. Um, the layout, if you go here to the layout, you can come up with, you know, what do you want the layout to look like? Do you want it to be horizontal, vertical? Um, you know, you want to add a section. So it's really kind of fun to get in there and play a little bit. And um, those steps from um, the University of North Carolina will um, definitely do that. Um, and so I just put this book together as just kind of a fun thing. I don't, I'm not sure if I put sounds in it or not, um, but just, you know, grabbed pictures. And if I'm in slideshow, let's go back here. So you can see how you can make it really fun and engaging. So that is that, um, and you can, oh, I must have not put another slide in here. I can have seen something funny. Um, so you can, you know, way you can play in PowerPoint if you are a Microsoft district, that is um, a great tool that you can, you know, have it played that you can narrate it. Um, so it's a great way to get some writing. And so the kids could be doing it at home, put it in their SharePoint and share with the group or share their screen or, you know, however you're doing your Zoom sessions and they could be in the author's chair and share their um, book about hiking. All right, so the next is Google Slides. Um, and I just popped some pictures in. And, and one thing you could do for some of your emergent writers is if you're in PowerPoint or Google Slides is you can just find pictures that they're interested in and you can just pop a bunch of pictures in a slide deck or a PowerPoint, and then they could pick which one they wanna write about that day. So this one I thought we could kind of do together. So I thought we'd do color book. So here are um, some flowers. I went to, I don't know how many of you know about Heron's Wood over here, I live in Kingston. Um, the owners have a, another place that have beautiful flowers. And um, I got to go tour it about a month ago. So you can insert a text box, drag it over here where you want it, and then have some text. Anybody have a caption for this one? Um, spring has arrived. Okay. What about this one? <clears throat> is that yellow or orange? Are it is orange. I was gonna, I was gonna do a color book. So you could just say, yeah. you know, flower. So you could do a structured writing that could say things like flowers are orange, or you could have an assignment um, for them that says, okay, I want you to write it, tell me what is your favorite color? And um, so they could write a whole sentence about, you know, orange is my favorite color, or I really love orange things. And, you know, and so you could kind of modify it um, based on, you know, what they needed. And you could come up with like, this could be your class book. So it could be by your class. And then it could just be a Google Doc that they keep and then they can reread it. So they get to reread it, um, all of those um, times and so you get um some just some you know i just like so that was like you know here we had like purple orange pink um, red you know so if you're working on you know color words spotted if you're working on you know features um yellow you know so just a variety um of colors so that was just kind of like one idea 
um, that's you have. You either have PowerPoint or you have Google um, Docs. So that's a really cool um, one. And then one of my favorite activities to do with the students um, remotely is to use Book Creator. And Book Creator has a ton of functions. And I'm going to show you one teeny tiny little piece and we're going to write a book together. So everybody get ready. Um, and I would do this with all of my students last spring and they were like tickled. So um, the website is bookcreator.com. And then unfortunately, I was going to show you some of the books that we did last year, but all of my books were with my old email address for my district, which must have gone away. And so that was gone. So we'll talk about the whole thing. So um, you could do an invite code and then um, the students could log into bookshare.org, um, get on and then write their own pages. I wasn't feeling like that tech savvy and like I wanted to manage that many things. And so what I would do is I would create a new book and then you can pick what you want it to look like. Do you want it to be um, portrait, square, landscape? We're gonna do a little, little book here. And then our book is gonna be about, oh, how about my favorite things? We'll do an I like book, how's that sound? So I'm gonna go over here. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. The thing about Book Creator is as a teacher, you get a free account and you can have, send codes and to your students so that they can work on books in Book Creator. Um, the other thing is when you finish your book, you can publish it and you send the link. You can send that link to all the students and then they can read it. It, it reads it out loud. Um, so, and like I said, there's so many things it's worth getting into the book creator site and figuring out what all it will do. But if you want to get started with something that's fun, engaging, and the kids love, this is all you need to know. Um, so let me move my little face over here. So I am going to import a picture and I am going to say let's see what comes up when I type in favorite. All right, so what I would do with the students is we would go, okay, oh, I don't really like anything that um, is, we're gonna pick my favorite things. Okay, so I'm gonna do beach. Beach is one of my favorite things, so being at the beach. So what I would do with my students is I was doing like the putting it in the book and they were doing some of the work. So I would say, is the picture you want in this row? So if you're working on those yes, no responses, they could be no, or if it's yes, here you're doing your partner assisted scanning. Is it this picture? Is it this picture? Is it this picture? Is it this picture? Yes. So you can um, do that. You can also, some of your other kids, you can tell me, you can get three rows on here and you can say, is it the first row, the second row, or the third row? Which picture over is it? Um, and so I am gonna pick this picture and I'm gonna do select. Now, once in a while, when you click select, it'll say that picture is no longer available and then you just need to go back and fix it. So you, can, oh my word. Okay, I've got to get book creator to quit talking to me. Um, you can put in text. So you can um, make it bold, italicized. You know, there's not a whole, but I can say my So when I would get to this page, I would ask the kids, okay, where do you want your title? Do you want it here? Do you want it here? Do you want it um, you know, down lower? Do you want it beside it? Is it big enough? Do you want it bigger, smaller? And then once you get there, so you can pick, oh, I want my words bigger. So I can go over here and I can make them bigger. And then I can drag it up here. And so they would be giving me directions for all these things. Um, which was actually really a kind of fun thing to work on some executive function and planning um, and organizing skills. But you can also um, 
pick a different font. It depends on kind of how um, creative you want to get. So typically what I would do is one session we'd go through and we'd get our book down. And then the next session we get our words and pictures picked. And then the next time we would jazz up our book. So you can change the font color. You've got all these background colors you can pick. There are columns. It must be how you set it up where you set up the word size, a new feature that since the last time I was there. Um, you can go over here and you can make the background of the page. So let's see, let's do a nice yellow sunny page. But you could also choose, I want it to look like a comic or different kind of paper, different borders, different background patterns. And this is super fun for them when they get there um, and different textures. Now, the first time I did it, I had a book that I had made. And so they, um, you know, got to see what one looked like. So they had kind of a sense. The other thing is you can record. And so you could record and you could actually read it. You know, my favorite, you know, I didn't share my my computer noise, so you won't hear that, but you just would, you know, turn it on and record it. So um, we'll do that. And then it start recording. So it's nice and My favorite things. And then you can listen to it and then use it and then it pops a little thing here. But you could, um, it's the um, text reader in Book Creator is going to read my favorite things. So you could record something like, I love the beach. You know, so, and then there's just another interactive feature in there. Um, okay, so now we're, oops. Hold on. Okay, so now we're on our, I am not sure what I did here. Edit, okay. Sorry about that. I am. Does anybody have any questions while I am figuring out what I am not doing right here? Do a page. Rose, let's pick a picture. Um, and I'd be like, okay. Okay, I'm going to go with the mountain theme. <laughs> um, and so then I would type, if they could spell mountain or if we were working on some spelling, I'd have them try to spell it for me. Okay. And then Rose. Oh, like which one? Maybe I should put Mount Rainier in there. It's my favorite one. You want me to try that one? Sure. Did I spell it right? No. R-A-I, yeah. It would have got it. All right. Nice, nice. So okay. Rose, is it one of these pictures? Ah. Or do you need me to keep looking? Um, it's one of these pictures. Is it in this row? No. This row? No. This row? Yes. Okay. Do you want to tell me, do you know which one over it is? One, two, three, four, five. All right. I'm going to click that one. Yep. That's it. And there's Rose's picture. So it yeah. is really big and took up both pages of the book. So if I <laughs> wanted her to stay on her side, I could put it here. And I'm like, Rose, do you want your picture at the top or the bottom? Um, the bottom. Okay. And let's put a text box in. So what I would do, so one of the themes that we did was animals. And so they, depending on their level, had to talk about that news to you animal they had been assigned. Um, so you could say, okay, I want you to describe the mountain for one of your groups of kids who have more literacy skills, or this could be back to your, I like poem. I mountains are, you know, and then they could pick the word, you know, in their, um, AAC device, um, for that, or they could spell it with 
you know, their alternative pencil, but we're going to put a text box in. And Rose, what are you going to say about the mountains? Uh, my husband proposed to me at Mount Rainier. And do you want to, what do we need to do next? Um, is this where we edit? Should we just say done? Well, do you want a period or something? Oh, or exclamation well, I, point. Oh, sure. Exclamation point. <laughs> so what I did with my students, so I wasn't, so my students who needed to dictate, I'd have them dictate like rows. Um, and then the students who um, were able to write, I'd say, okay, write your sentence. And so we might go to the next person and pick the picture or, and then they would show me when we got back to them what their sentence was. And so I could make any little quick corrections. Um, I mean, and Karen Erickson talks about not making correct, you either type it exactly how, you know, they wanted it, but I could do some corrections on your sentence. I love it. Let's get it in here. We're going to put it in here, but next time you do your G, can you make sure the line, it goes under the line and can you practice one of those for me and show me and, you know, so you could work on some of the handwriting instruction. And um, so that's um, how I did it. So it just really depended. And my AAC users were like right there on their device. And so I might have pre-done the book, you know, mountains are, and it's like, okay, pick your word. I want to hear it. And when I'd hear it, I'd write it in. Um, so a variety of ways to do that. And then I could go over here to Rose and say, okay, Rose, what about your text? Is it big enough? Uh, I want it bigger, please. Okay, tell me when. Oh, smaller, right there. Okay, do you want it bold or italicized or underlined? Um, no, centered. Okay, I think I'm, oh, centered, okay. Yeah, there you go. Do you want it a different color? Right. Um, yeah, purple. Sweet. Okay, and then I'm gonna go to the page. What color background of the page do you want? And there's a ton of colors. You could pick whatever. Um, well, I'm going to stick well, with the theme. How about that lavender color that was on the previous page? Okay. Or, yeah, that one. Ooh. Oh, and so this, because I did this type of book, the whole page is like this. So I, t I haven't done this second, this section. I usually do the square book. Um, so then you can have their whole page. Um, anyway, so then again, we could say, oh, do you, well, would you rather have this kind of a background? Ooh, Look at this one, the lower right. Yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, and then we can move Maybe that's too, too. Oh, like in the middle. There you go. And then I have to change my font. Yeah. Uh, and what font would show up there? Maybe yellow or something. Okay. No. Uh, well, we can make it really big too. We can hold on. Ah. Black should work. Well, now it's not cooperating with me. What? Page. All right, Rose, I'm gonna stop us there because, you know, because I'm on Zoom, nothing is working exactly like I wanted to work for the moment. <laughs> Who messes with these programs? All right, so then I go back to my book. So Ro any other questions? Anybody else dying to do a page? No. Okay. All right. So let me put this back up here. All right. So sorry. One of the things you don't see is me moving the navigation bars all over the screen so I can actually get to the button that I want. So um, do you see down here the little um, link? Mm -hmm. So if you click that, it will give you the option to publish, collaborate, that is new. So I could send it to one of you guys and we could be working on it. Download it as an ebook. And can someone see what the bottom one is? Cause it's under my closed captioning. Print. It's just print. Okay. So, or you can print it. So when you click on publish online, um, and then you'll need to change the author if it's like one of your groups, otherwise you're the author. And so I would do like, my amazing fifth graders, or we'd pick a name for the group or, you know, something. And so then you publish the book. And then 
you can right here it says copy the public copy the link to the clipboard and so then it's copied to the clipboard and you can put it in your canvas or your seesaw or your newsletter home and so then they all have access to that and so when it was some of my students I would do things like um you know I might use their first name or something you know what where we didn't have a picture you know so it would be like so and so then when it reads it at the end it was like they would get so excited because every day when we, before we finished we would read the book um so let's see if I can share my computer sound here I just think that's so important. That simple last step of publishing and sending it home. Mm -hmm. How often yes. I remember actually printing a, a clicker book in full color by accident on a on a color printer at school and like, whoops, that was a lot of ink. Mm -hmm. But this is just perfect. I love it. Yeah. And so then it'll um, so when it does read the book, you click up here and you do read to me. My favorite things. My husband proposed to me at Mount Rainier. I believe you can switch the voice because that is not the voice we were using. So um, I'm sure here in settings, we can find someone who speaks a little nicer than Agnes maybe. The kids really don't care, honestly, though. I guess we're going with Agnes. That has been an upgrade as well. Not necessarily one that I'm crazy about. Now I lost English altogether, but look at all the languages you could have it read in, you know, when you're looking at your um, ELL kiddos. Here we go. Oh, now I have some choices. Let's try Alex. Let's try Ava. Ava. Bad news. You know, so there's some silly, crazy things they can pick. So again, another way to make it kind of fun and crazy. Um, so questions about book creator. Hill shared reader, and I'm going to go to that site quick because we're about out of time. I think we'll be just fine. Is um, Tar Hill reader again is. Um, um, created and managed by the um, Center for Literacy and Disability Studies out of the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. And there's ways to find books, but we're going to write a book. Now, when you write a book, it's going to ask you to log in. And um, my password isn't going to be right. But um, so the password, I can't tell you the password because we're recording this, but Andrea is going to put it in the chat again. Oh, my login failed. Oh, so you're going to want to register. So again, here's my thing with all my um, mess, but we're going to go back here and I'm going to take you back to the main site. Just so you can see what they look like when they're done. So if you, we're going to go to find a book. Um, so here's my, I was looking for books with the core word go but it's the end of the day. So nose looks pretty good to me. Um, anyway, so they can, you can go in and write the book. You can use the code and register and create your um, account. And then you can write and publish your own book. And then they can search their book. And so you can either publish it, you know, widely to everybody who uses Tar Hill Reader, or you can publish it. Um, there's some um, settings to where it's just like your group. Um, so it's super easy. It's switch accessible. Um, if you go up here to this little thing, you can change the background colors for like some of your, um, low vision students. So let's say we want some high contrast here. Um, you can also turn the speech on and you can pick a 
child, a woman, a man, or use whatever's built in? No, no, no. And then, um, no, no, no. I don't like things that start with N. I do not like them. Not now or then. Would you like a nut? I hear you say. No, no, no. No nuts for me today or yesterday. All right. So I am going to stop us there. And so that's kind of how Tar Heel Reader um, works. And again, you, one of the things, you know, so you can, like I said, write your book and publish it on Tar Heel Reader. And then um, if you let, um, and then they can find it, you know, whenever they want. So it's a really great, it's a great way to publish writing. It's also a really great way to get that content about what we're going to write about. You know, let's find a word about the letter N and let's see what things N says so we can, um, you know, know a little bit about what we're going to write about. And now it's our turn to write about the letter N. And then in the PowerPoint, I've just got uh, a few little slides. I'm going to buzz through here quickly um, because it is 3.30. And just there's some, just some visuals to help get more out of your kids when they're writing. And so I just popped those in there and they'll be in your PowerPoint. So just, you know, especially when you're looking beyond that emergent um, phase and you're looking at trying to stretch their writing out to get um, more information. And then, you know, like we talked about at the beginning, you know, literacy is the ultimate life skill. And just a few references there. Um, any questions? <laughs>